bit of pet spending on my project over here, a bit of pet spending on your policy over there, the politicians would adore it. The people who would be let down are those people who want to keep interest rates low and get our economy going. We're campaigning to do things differently so that people uh, get a better life for themselves and their family. That is concrete, it's specific, we've been very straightforward with people, and I think that's why an increasing number of people are starting to hope that we can do things differently for themselves and their family. David Miliband says it's fine to uh, campaign on anti-politics, but you can't govern that way. Uh, and of course you can't uh, govern on a platform of anti-politics. You can govern uh, on a platform of doing things differently so that we can have fair taxes, so people get money back in their pockets who need a break, so that we get the banks to lend the money that has been given to them in the taxpayer funded bailout which has been hoarded, not lent to viable British businesses and households, that we can provide more affordable housing, particularly to young families who, uh, who, you know, who are just finding it really difficult to get a foot on the, the property ladder. These are, I think, the specific things that people can ask themselves about in this, uh, in this final phase of the election campaign. And just a brief one on David Cameron's political reform. Do you think unelected prime ministers should be forced to call an election within six months? I haven't heard a word what David Cameron said this morning yet, so I'm saying only two. Okay. Where, where, who do you children. want? To... Nick, this is. Sorry. Nick. First day with your children. Yeah. Lovely to have them back. Yeah, absolutely lovely. We've uh, we've uh, we haven't seen them for three weeks, which is uh, a long, long time. So it's <coughs> absolutely great. It's, it's great just to take a very small break now. Um, Miriam and I just delighted mm -hmm. the children are back, and then really to hit the campaign trail tomorrow. Parking and parking. And bus lanes in Ealing. Cab fares and phone scares to the city glass ceiling. Bin bags in Belfast. And roads in Dungannon. House prices, rate rises. Local damn planning. Places in Stirling. And vices in Mull. Fox hunting, fly tipping. Grey squirrel call. Jobs in the valleys. Tourists in Rail. Hospital queues. In the Brass River Phil. Bank lanes in Leicester. And prisons in Preston. Erosion in Pool. The West Lothian question. Tassels in Brussels. And planning permissions. Funding for London. And farming and fishing. Whatever issues you care about this election. Wherever you are, we've got them covered. The Politics Show with me, John Sopel, tomorrow at 2 on BBC One. Hello, good evening. With 12 days to go before the election, Gordon Brown has promised to up the tempo of his campaign by holding more question and answer sessions with ordinary voters. The Conservative leader, David Cameron, has been warning of the risk to the economy if the election results in a hung parliament. But the Liberal Democrat leader, Nick Clegg, took a day off to spend time with his sons who had been stranded in Spain. Ian Watson reports. When no one else can understand me Lacklustre. That's been the accusation by some senior figures about Labour's campaign so far. So this rally represented an attempt to bring it to life. When everything I do is wrong. Perhaps this is what Labour means by upping the tempo of the campaign. And this on the day when they say they want to concentrate on substance, not style. But in fact, there's going to be fewer set-piece rallies like this and a lot more of the Prime Minister going out and meeting floating voters. With just 12 days left until voters go to the polls, all three party leaders were keen to seize the agenda this weekend. But although Labour are changing the style of their campaign, the underlying message remains much the same. Just this morning, the International Monetary Fund has produced a report. And it is said that all countries facing this global financial crisis around the world should not be withdrawing the support from the economy now. They say that that support is essential for 2010. David Cameron said today if he gets to number 10, he'd force unelected prime ministers to face voters within six months of taking office. I wonder if he had anyone in mind. But with the parties bunching together in the polls, he continued to campaign for an outright majority. 
when you stop and think about it, would it be real change if we ended up with a hung parliament and Gordon Brown as Prime Minister? That's not change. That's, that's more of the same. It could actually be worse because you could have the Liberal Democrats insisting on policies like uh, emptying the jails and not controlling immigration. The Liberal Democrat leader spent the day with his children who'd only recently managed to fly back from Spain and he predicted